beat up the real deal now. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 46 of the Lowdown Show Brand Wars on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our segment called The List of Ten and our WWE headlines where we talk about any important news in the WWE. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. And after we are done recording, it is posted in your for your listening enjoyment on in full on Spreaker, YouTube, and iTunes. So go check us out wherever it's convenient and easier for you to listen to us. If you'd like to join in on a conversation, have your thoughts and questions read and discussed on the podcast, tweet us in the Holds Bar WP or by dropping a comment on YouTube. As well as go follow us and subscribe to us on YouTube and Twitter, guys. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And every week, I'm continued to be joined by my co-host, the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Very blissful this week for very, multiple reasons. Very, very blissful. Uh, one, we have a new setup. Yes. A new No Holds Barred. Moving up. We've retired the No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast Samsung Galaxy Note 3. <laughs> it's been officially retired. Uh, my girl page, as in not page WWE, but my girlfriend page, actually bought me a laptop as an early birthday present yesterday. So kudos to her and shadows to her for getting us a laptop for the podcast. And now we're doing this from Spreaker still, from the laptop though. So we got it all hooked up here. Uh, eventually, I think I'll transition to USB mics, but we're still using our uh, Nolds Bard headsets. So uh, for now, this is a, a new setup here. And this is great. Uh, I think it's a lot easier. <laughs> I got little tweets here. I can have everything right in front of me here. No notes anymore. I, can't, I can barely read my handwriting half the time. I have like chicken scratch handwriting. Like it literally, it looks like look at this, look at this. It looks like some four year old grabbed it with their left hand and was like, "I'm gonna write lowdown show." It's bad. It's bad. I can admit that it's bad. Okay. It's okay. So, other than that, I think that's uh, it's one of the reasons why I'm blissful this week. I don't know if you have anything. Well, the fact that I got my Alexa Bliss. Um figurine in on since what is it, monday Ooh, yeah and then, uh, the big trade we did with our boy big time breaks yeah stay into that him. shout outs to big time breaks on twitter guys we did a, a uh, card trade that my boy corporate cappy here did and i'll be posting that on the weekend for you guys so look out for that unboxing video coming up this weekend as well yep. here on the podcast um other than that uh guys one thing to announce next week we'll be announcing our twitter fan of the month winner and the winner will get their tweets featured first every week for that next month. And, you know, we're not going to do a theme song. But, you know, this, I think that's fair enough that we uh, feature your tweets. And you get an honorable mention. We'll, we'll say you won the Twitter Fan of the Month for February after or before reading your tweets first. Maybe you'll get an award for the if, if <laughs> the person who has the most Twitter Fans of the Month. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll make like a I'll, – I'll go and like edit and make a NHBWP Participation Award. <laughs> you'll get one of those. Whoever has, yeah, whoever has the most Twitter fan of the month. <laughs> I think it's a good. Of the year, whatever. <laughs> Other than Michael Chow, you cannot be in it. Yeah, Michael Chow, you're exempt. You won Twitter fan of the year, man. Come on, relax. <laughs> Chill out. Can't man. win everything. Can't win everything, man. And I know you sent us some great stuff, but you know we got some stuff on the way to you right now. So stay tuned for that, Michael Chow. Other than that, guys, you know what? Let's just get in your tweets. Uh, actually, uh, hold up here. Hold up here. Before we get into it, sort of mini rant. Mini rant alert. Oh no. Um, two things. One was, uh, me and my boy, Copra Copier, we love collecting, uh, hockey cards and WWE cards. And we have our own local store we support all the time here in, uh, Niagara Falls. Beautiful Niagara Falls. Honeymoon capital of the world. Yeah, okay. Uh, we go, so we go there today, and, uh, we're finding some, we're looking for some, you know, decent hockey cards, some Young Gun cards. I don't know if you guys collect hockey cards out there and know what Young Guns are, and if you do, you know what we're talking about. We look for the, the, the special Young Gun cards. So, uh, we're in there. While I'm there looking through the car, some lady walks in, okay, and I think she's looking around, going, okay, maybe she's getting some for her grandson or something, you know, maybe, you know, whatever, you know, people, it's a nice thing to do. She's holding the lottery ticket though in her hand, and I go, okay, what the hell is going on with this? Is she gonna like buy a card with a lottery ticket? Like, is she, is she crazy? But and it, it gets better here. She goes up to the cash register and asks our girl Leslie behind the counter and says, "Do you have?" A lottery checking machine here in your card store. 
Are you? Lady, <laughs> you're in a collectible. It's a small store, tiny, with one hallway for hockey cards and such. And you're going there to check your lottery ticket. She didn't want anything else. Just wanted to check her lottery ticket. Oh, yeah. No, a perfect way. You know, I, I got to check this lottery ticket. I might be a I'm millionaire. I'm glad I didn't hear um, that. Let's see. We got a gas station right here where usually I would check it. Oh, but I'm going to go in this card store right across the street. That makes more sense. Why not oh, yeah, do that? Because they're definitely going to have a lottery ticket machine. Unbelievable. I just <laughs> mind boggled me. You're lucky you didn't hear that. I'm going, what the hell did that lady just ask? Really? Terrible. I'm looking at the uh, our girl is going, really? Like, really? <laughs> Miz, really? Awful. Really? What's the second rant? Uh, second rant, uh, it's it's WWE related. And I just want to point out Raw this week was so heavy. Vince and Kevin Dunn, it was bad. Like, I didn't see any creative control whatsoever. It's like Vince and Dunn said, everyone go home. We got this for the night. Literally, from start to finish, Raw was completely done and Vince-ized. That makes any <laughs> sense. And we'll get into that in review. Um, mini yeah. ra- one mini rant from, from me. Why can't WWE give more product to us up here? Why can they never give us cards available yeah. at Walmart? If you guys aren't Canadian out there, we, we shafted up here, man. We went to like four different Walmarts. We, we can't buy t-shirts up here. We got to order from the shop, and we're also paying like double because you do the conversion and you do the taxes, the duty fee that they now charge, which is ridiculous. And we're paying like almost triple what it actually costs on the shop for you Americans out there. It's terrible for us. We're, we're shafted. We have nowhere to order from here. They need a shop Canada up here. We want to shame. One. And, and when it comes to like uh, memorabilia and collectibles, we're shafted as well. Nothing. We got we got Walmart to go to. The only thing basically to go up here, and sometimes it looks like a tornado went through the shelves. You can't see. Don't there's nothing. nothing. They never yeah, got, got Cesaro and Sin Cara. Like I want to collect those things. No, they, they don't. They don't belong in my collection. Yo, you, oh, you get a Sin Cara one, and you can replace his mask. Ooh, whoa. Or a John Cena. Great. Or a John Cena. They have they like never 800 have, of those. And they never have any cards on the shelves whatsoever. Yeah, no cards either, and that's a big thing with us. We're, we're recently getting into the card collecting. Yeah, and even our, even our card shops don't have, like, singles of yeah. WWE cards. So that's that. Yeah, that's that. So let's get into the tweets. The tweets, and we'll start off with the relevance. He puts, and this is in terms of Raw, Raw was shit. I agree with him right there. Three highlights. Kevin Owens is serious again. Doesn't matter since he's losing. Joe attacking Zayn was fun. Because to be honest, I pooped when Braun did that kick up. And people were bitching because Reigns was in the ending of Raw. Raw was meh. Small Joe looking like a beast and Kevin Owens promo. Oh wait, that's Chloe's Greg. My bad. So Reigns was in the ending of Raw was irrelevance. And uh, it's, I hate Twitter, man. They can't organize tweets properly. Uh, the motherfucking big dog and crushed by my boy. Oh, man. Yeah, fucking sound clip. Harper looking. Or, or, yeah, what could you ask for? Four out of ten should be three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But then my boy. I can't. The sound clip, man. It gets me every freaking time. Uh, I'm so glad we've got it down to three, man. I don't know if I can handle this whole show with these stupid Bron clips. Anyways. Uh, oh, God. I hate, man, I hate Twitter. This is ridiculous. Uh, did a missile drop kick to Reigns, and then him power slamming him was a nice sight. Well, that's a nice sight, I guess. In terms of SmackDown, he put SmackDown Live was great. Naomi being built up as a symphony character better than Bailey. She's she'll come back before WrestleMania and win it there. The Uso spitting hot fire was a surprise. I love it, but poor Prezongo. The Falls Count Anywhere match was match of the night. Mm. Natalia and Nikki are the uh, was the best. Oh my God, you worded this wrong. Relevance. Was the best woman's feud on TV. Okay, here we go. And now we're going and we're getting a mixed feed with never mind. Just rest in peace, Miz and Maurice. <laughs> the Battle Royal was a great match to watch. Too bad my boy Braun. I'm not even gonna play a sound clip. You know what? That's too much. That's too much. I just did it by your, by myself. Uh, 
wasn't in it because we he would have have he would have won. <laughs> but he's not on SmackDown. <laughs> ending was meh. But the ending gets me wanting to see more. That's good. Seven out of ten plus uh on Talking Smack, AJ said Shane would have made a better uh see this is why Twitter sucks with the organization, man. I gotta do this better next time. Was a better decision planting the seeds? I see Shane McMahon to be on SmackDown next week. Overall, great show. Okay. Sorry for the misorganization there, guys. It's a lot with this new setup and how Twitter organizes shit. Uh, Raw was meh. Samoa Joe looking this like... from? This is from... Oh, sorry. This is from Glorious Greg. Thank you for correcting me. Raw was meh. Samoa Joe looking like a beast. And Kevin Owens' promo was good. And Braun looking strong is awesome. Raw gets 2 out of 10. <laughs> what a positive review with a great rating. <laughs> oh, man. Harper looking really strong, and the Usos promo was interesting. Hope they win the tag titles at WrestleMania. Oh, that's SmackDown. See what I mean? Like, it doesn't, I hate how Twitter organizes this. Ugh. So after that, Raw tweet by Glory Ray. Okay, he puts here. Oh, yeah. And Kyle, one more thing. God. <laughs> Thank you, Glorious Greg. And SmackDown was a solid show. I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Okay, so now this is a SmackDown tweet. My God, man. This is so bad. Harper really looking strong. Uso's promo was really interesting. Hope they win the tag titles at WrestleMania and no Ellsworth. Yeah, I can agree with that. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. This is really bad. I got one last tweet here. It looks like by Glorious Greg. Thank God. Sucks that we're getting the mixed tag match. And I got one more thing to add to this for Corporate Cappy. And that is... <laughs> It's like A1, 3, 2. Sure. <laughs> all right. Now, the rest of the tweets are all organized. I just hate how the, the first set of tweets that came in was all, like, clusterfuck. It's like it's like looking at Monday Night Raw's, like, Show. page for the night. Like, it's terrible. Uh, next tweet, Joshy J, at Joshy underscore J, puts, Refer to my tweet a few days ago for Raw, and the A Show gets a perfect 10. He's got the Ty Dillinger gif going. So, thank you, Joshy J. Uh, Tony Mercer puts, fell asleep during Raw, so I can't rate it. <laughs> Probably but best you did. Yeah, but SmackDown was really good. Yeah, Tony Mercer, you didn't miss much. SmackDown was really good again this week. The Battle Royals set up several feuds and furthered the Ambrose and Corbin one. Nikki and Natalia put on a hard-hitting match as well. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Solid Fair. ring right there. Yep. <laughs> Next set of tweets. Casey Salvis at Salvis94. Who is now in Florida. Florida. For <laughs> vacation this week. <laughs> Raw was boring. The only good thing about this show was Samoa Joe in the main of ev- Samoa Joe and the main event was okay. But of course, Garbage Reigns had to show up. And Mick Foley is the worst GM I've ever seen. <laughs> 2.5 out of 10. Hashtag dumpster fire with the gif of the dumpster being on Did fire. Did he say anything about Roman this week? <laughs> Uh, no, that was it for Roman. Wow. Uh, well, he did call them garbage reigns. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, SmackDown was pretty good. Always an interesting show. Nice to see Alexa get the title back. Weird. And the Battle Royal was good. Until the ending. 8 out of 10 for SmackDown. And he's got John Cena gift going, <laughs> uh, Next set of tweets, and I apologize to him in a private message. It was my bad. I didn't see it last week. Um, but I guess he told me uh, Twitter was having some technical issues with him. But Prince Jones, our boy from YouTube and his new YouTube, uh, new Twitter account, uh, a.k.a. King Scampoli, if you remember Corporate Formally Cappy. Known as. Uh, he puts, Raw was actually a fun show. I found myself in, <laughs> I found myself enjoyed the main event, but Roman was on it twice. So negative 2.3 out of 10. <laughs> P.S. Fuck T.J. Perkins. Oh, T.J. Perkins. T.J. Perkins. You hate T.J. Perkins, don't you? Control? Like Neville over here. <laughs> SmackDown was great. A thought, a shitty fin. Uh, uh, SmackDown was great though. A shitty finish. Considered all good matches. Although I wanted Mojo to win the Battle Royal. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd be crazy if he did. I'd be going nuts. But uh, Prince Joe's put SmackDown nine out of ten. It's a decent rating. Uh, oh, I like this. And there's a random irrelevance tweet right in the mix here. But, you know, we read your tweets. We'll go with that. Next set of tweets. 
comes from Cullen at Gamma NU1. Raw wasn't bad or good. I did like Roman getting killed by Braun and Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe. Always awesome seeing them. Oh, and oh, oh, okay. Also, oh my God, see why does Twitter do this? I don't understand. I I'm sorry. I don't Twitter understand. makes the list. Literally, Twitter makes a list. We're seeing them. Oh, and AJ clear because it goes right from Raw to the SmackDown tweet. I don't understand why it doesn't organize this better. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna read it from here. Oh, and AJ clearly hit the ground first, but you know Derby likes to think we're stupid sometimes. <laughs> okay, yeah, they like do. We didn't see that camera angle. And SmackDown, eh, nothing about it felt special, but it could be because I missed it live and got spoiled. <laughs> The Battle Royal was pointless, which is worse because the Rumble was made pointless to begin with. I can't give a, I can't give a clear winner this week, unfortunately. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, that's, it's tough. I mean, it, yeah, SmackDown has some flaws, but I still say SmackDown would have won this week. We'll get into that in the review. And the last set of tweets comes from... You, you love so good to me. That's right. It comes from at Real Michael Chow. And you're wondering why he has a theme song. It's because he won our 2016 NHBWP Twitter Fan of the Year. And he'll get this theme for the rest of the year. Guys, if you want to win your Twitter Fan of the Year, all you have to do is tweet at us. We take everyone into account and we make our decision at the end of the year. So and One way to get there is by winning Twitter Fan of the Month. Yes, we, could, we take those into consideration as well. So, we'll get into Michael Chow's tweets. And he puts, Raw was okay. I didn't give it an okay, Michael Chow. It was terrible. Terrible. What is this? He puts 5 out of 10 for Raw. Interesting. New Day, Rusev, The Club, Emma, etc. have no direction on the road to the biggest pay-per-view. Bravo, Raw. Bravo. And he's got The Rock giving a <laughs> a uh, standing ovation. <laughs> It's so funny that Roman tries to jump Braun but keeps getting his ass kicked. You'll be seeing this hashtag a lot. Hashtag Roman fail. <laughs> I like that hashtag. He puts, I predict when Foley leaves for hip surgery, he will be taken out by the hashtag new authority and Triple H will be the new Raw GM. Oh, Ooh. that's interesting. Okay, I, I, I like that. I like that. Question from Michael Chow. Finn Balor is confirmed for house shows before WrestleMania. Yes, we know. And they're all around us. Uh, would you like to see him... F who would you like to see him face at Mania? My pick is Joe. I pick Joe, too. That'd be great, man. Can you have Finn Balor with Samoa Joe at WrestleMania? That'd probably be match of the night, to be honest. That'd be the only match I'm looking forward to so well, far at WrestleMania, besides I mean, Corbin and my obvious ones. I mean, they had great feud down in NXT, so... Yeah, so yeah, I think we both agree with you, Michael Chow, as uh, Samoa Joe would be a great pick for Balor. Uh, Michael Chow puts for SmackDown. SmackDown is great as usual. 8 out of 10. Didn't like the ending in a tie, but fans should relax about the botch. They don't like it. Watch Raw. <laughs> <laughs> I like that answer. Yeah. Uh, that Nikki vs. Natty match was surprisingly great. SmackDown Live puts on pay-per-view matches while Raw puts on WWE Studio matches. And he puts the picture of the chaperone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, great yeah. movie. <laughs> Question. What is your fave... February pay-per-view match. Uh, no way out. Elimination Chamber. Fast Lane. Mine was Austin versus HHH. Three stages of hell. No way out. Two thousand one. Michael, Ch I can't remember these months, man. Wow, like, man. I, honestly, I can't remember. Uh, February. Okay, so you put some. You know what? No was... way out. Okay, I got one. No Stone, way... Stone Cold's return versus Eric Bischoff. Oh my god. Where he god. kicked the shit out of Eric yeah, Bischoff. Yeah, that's a good one. You know what? I have one, and it was in February. Um. I'm actually going to confirm this. But uh, when Eddie Guerrero won the WWE Championship from oh, Brock, Brock. Lesnar yep. at No Way Out. Uh, and I'm going to quickly, because I have the, the, the new No Holds Bar Wrestling laptop here, and I can quickly uh, research this while we're on the air here. So I'm pretty sure that was February. It was it, it was 2004, that's for sure. Um, yep, yeah, No Way Out. Let me just look up No Way Out 2004. And we got a confirmation No Way Out 2004 was on February 15th. So, yes, that was my favorite moment right there, if I can think of it off the top. Eddie Guerrero finally winning his first WWE Championship against Brock Lesnar. And that going on to WrestleMania to face, was it Kurt Angle to face? 
for the WWE Championship? Yeah, it was. Because Brock Lesnar faced Goldberg. Because Goldberg screwed him out of that match. So, interesting. But, uh, yeah, those would be it, Michael Child. You're giving us a hard question there, but uh, those are it. Yep. And uh, that's going to oh, do it. Also, uh, what about The Rock versus Hulk Hogan, where they screwed him over oh, in Montreal? Oh, yeah, the rematch, like yeah. the official rematch. The, the, the screw job on Hogan by Vince yeah. and The Rock and Sylvain Grenier. Sylvain Grenier, the, the referee. The ref. <laughs> oh, God. Anyways. Good times, good times. Yeah. Let's get into the raw review. Let's talk about this shit show, man. Fuck this week, man. It was just complete. It was high. It was dumpster fire. Like, it, like I've said every week, this week was just even more. It's like they they've put in more piles of shit into the fire this week. It was straight Kevin Dunn and Vince McMahon. I swear to God, this was all produced by those two. I bet you they they told the, the writers to have the night off, and they took it every. And this is just screams. Dunn and Vince all show. Dun dun dun. It was bad, man. Raw was really, really fucking bad this week. I feel week. like it doesn't even deserve us talking about it. Like, we know that it's bad, but this week was really bad. Like, it goes beyond bad. It's below par. I don't even consider it par. And you're, what, six weeks away from the biggest pay-per-view of the year? Nothing, nothing. This week, nothing built towards WrestleMania besides Brock Lesnar's... Re- I don't even know what kind of promo that was, and we'll talk about it later. <laughs> um, other than that, Nothing. Right, like Evan Owens, Kevin Owens didn't even mention about anything about Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho wasn't even there. So like, what the hell? What was this raw? What was the point of this raw this week? Is it a filler raw? Until they to get past Fastlane? I think like, it, I think it basically was. I think it was a, a write off. God. So we got the opening segment here uh, with Kevin Owens and he's under a spotlight. Heavy booze, man, and it's, uh, all from that uh, breakup. And it was good. This is a good way to turn. Uh, Owens to that full heel man because he was still getting cheered a little bit with the whole uh, Jericho thing, but now he's just like there's no no one's cheering Kevin Owens right now. Uh, Owens saying the spotlight is finally where it belongs. <laughs> uh, talks about his match versus Goldberg at Fastlane. Uh, Owens says he never believed the hype even when he was a kid watching him in WCW. He never believed the hype around Goldberg. Uh, says Bill got lucky against Brock Lesnar. And now he knows what to expect from Goldberg heading into their match. And he's not worried to lose that Universal Championship. Uh, he says he don't doesn't have to beat Goldberg, just outlast him hmm. and outsmart him. So interesting. That's a pretty good promo so far by Kevin Owens. Uh, I like the seriousness out of it. Um, Kevin Owens goes on and says uh, he knows how to play the game mm-hmm. better than anyone else. There's the buzzword. There's the uh, the buzzword, the whole buzz of what the hell is going on with this in, uh, rumored NXT invasion or whatever, Triple H making a new evolution or whatever. But uh going to be interesting to see what happens, man. Um, uh, they finally make Kevin Owens look like a credible champion and it's too late. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to lose in two weeks. Yep. Uh, says that fast sign he is going to show Goldberg and his son – that superheroes don't exist. Mm. Uh, and instead, he always talk, he talks about uh, Goldberg saying, you're, n- you're, you're next. And he goes, Goldberg, I have something for you. You're nothing. And Goldberg, he just said it in like, Goldberg fashion. And as far as Chris Jericho goes, and he just drops the mic. This is the Kevin away. Owens we, we've needed for months. Yeah, and how are we finally getting it? But he, it's get, it gets put on a filler raw where just no one gives a shit or no one gave a shit after so terrible, terrible way to put a really good promo. I don't know if that's – I, I kind of agree with you what you said yesterday about how it shouldn't have opened the show. Oh, this it, it, When you look at the rest of Raw, they shouldn't have opened the show. I mean, well, it should because – There wasn't really anything else. It just it didn't make me – it was good, and I loved the work from Owens. It just didn't make me want to keep watching Raw. Like, I didn't, I, nothing intrigued me like SmackDown does. SmackDown catches you in the first five minutes, and you don't want to leave your couch. This – I am like, all right, Kevin Owens' segment's done. I'm gonna go get some food and be back in an hour and a half, and then I'll miss nothing from Raw. <laughs> but it, it, for once, Raw didn't open up with overproduced garbage, though. Yeah, like they no. didn't have everyone. Open with five Reigns. people come out with their entrances, and then, to be honest, you know, I was actually crap. hoping to hear fucking Roman Reigns' end. I wasn't hoping, but I thought we were gonna hear his theme song. Like, oh yeah, because you know Roman has so much to do with the main event right now. He's always got to be in the main event or the yeah. opening every time. We'll get to Roman later on the show. Uh, we'll move on from this. We get Cesaro and Sheamus versus Enzo and Cass in a number one contenders match. So we finally get a tag team match from this whole shit. This whole, like, shit show, unless you can call it. Um, and California loved Enzo and Cass this week. They are so over, man. They're incredible. Um, and it's crazy. 
and these guys still get over it week after week. Even though they're fucking doing KFC Georgia Gold all the time. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't a long match, maybe about five minutes. It was decent for that most part. Uh, ending was kind of meh. Just got an East River crossing from a distracted Cesaro, and that was it. And Enzo and Cass become your number one contenders. And then the promo after. And the promo. Enzo cuts this. Like, I don't even know what this promo was on, on Cesaro. I'm going, what is it? It is so cringe, I don't even remember it. And then all of a sudden, you get Sheamus with a bro kick out of nowhere. And then Enzo was just, like, literally motionless. And that's it. That's how we end it. <laughs> what the fuck was this? Am I, how am I supposed to care about this shit? <laughs> I literally didn't care. It's with two teams that I actually find intriguing, and I love Enzo and Cass, but I can't get behind this when they have bullshit like this is right here. Kevin Dunn and Vince McMahon told them to go out and do this shit. Awful. <laughs> Awful, man. But thank you. They had thank you, Shane. It didn't make sense either. A crowd didn't even know what to think of it because they were so behind Enzo and Cass, and then after Sheamus bro-kicked Enzo at the end, the crowd's chanting, thank you, Sheamus. And I'm like, what? What? Weren't they just chanting for Enzo and Cass, like, not even 30 seconds ago? I think they thought that Enzo's ending promo was cringe, I guess. Oh, man. I don't know. I don't know what the hell was going on here. I just, I, I was cringing so bad. I was biting my tongue. So we move on. We got Mick Foley that finds Kevin Owens backstage, books a match with Sami Zayn. Sami Lane. Yeah, Sami Lane. Uh, Owens tells uh, Mick Foley to be careful, or else you're going to put your whole injured locker room on the shelf. Your, your mm, whole locker okay. room's going to be on the injured reserve. And we got a Braun Strowman promo package like we need one of those. And then call him the Monster Among Men, who's going to get jawed by Roman Reigns at Fastlane. That makes sense. Uh, so we move on to another useless promo about Bailey and her life story and how she... Why do this promo for a tarnished win? So st- why did they save this promo for, like, after she won at WrestleMania? Legitly. I don't understand. I can't believe they did that. I was so pissed I off. I can't believe that she won Bailey's the title. It yeah. made fucking no sense for the yeah. build-up for the rest of the And we'll get in that to the woman's segment of this show. Uh, we get backstage. We get Roman Reigns in the club and Mick Foley's dressing room. I'm like, oh my god, this is already cringe because Roman Reigns is going to make to look strong. And Mick says that Roman needs to go out and find a partner. <laughs> and what Roman says, I'm like, yep, there it is. There's the moment. Roman says that he can take these guys on by himself. Oh, yeah, Roman, you're so cool, Before man. Before the match even starts, I'm like, it's over. Club loses. You're Roman. You're so cool, man. You could take on Roman two guys Roman stupidly once. strong once again. Yep. Okay, neat. Moving on. Uh, Brian Kendrick versus Akira Tozawa. Uh, Kendrick pissed off at Tozawa for turning Kendrick down last week on 205 Live to take him under his wing. Uh, we got Tozawa. Ah. 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 What is with that, man? I don't know. He's trying to get the crowd to do it. He's trying to get the crowd to do it. He's making his entrance. Freaking hilarious. The sound right, of people then. in the crowd were just like pissing themselves laughing at it. I don't know. We're, we're putting that aside. Tazawa is a great ad for the 205 Live division, though. Um, match doesn't even start, though. We don't even get a match. And Kendrick beats down Tazawa. It's like a turnbuckle spot he does with his head. And gives him a captain's hook. And the match just doesn't even start. So it's bad enough that the Cruiserweights get hardly any time on Raw. But they, we don't even get a match here. Like... Setting up for the feud, I guess. Oh well. Like I don't know what else to say. With what? With this. Like we didn't even get a match. We got the match at 205 Live, but cruiserweights are bad as enough as it is on Raw. But we get no match out of this. No, oh, because they want to make it shorter. Stupid. One hour of cruiserweights. AJBL, right? Unreal. Oh, like, like we got a, We got some. Uh, got some chat going on in our uh, our studio here. We got Greg. Greg, uh, uh, talking to us right here. Thank you, Greg, for answering us. I can see you tw- uh, tw- <laughs> chatting here. This is awesome about this whole studio setup here. Um, we got uh, the little chat box. If you guys want to want to chat with us while we're on the air? Get the speaker app. You can chat with us. So I'm gonna I'm gonna answer your glorious Greg right now. What's going on, bud? Anyways, we're talking about fucking dumpster fire yeah, raw. Right I, now. I'd rather talk to glorious Greg here than talk about raw. That's how bad raw is right here. Uh, anyways. Roman Reigns versus the club. Okay. Uh, I love the new club's t-shirt, the vintage one. Just, uh, it, it, it's so good. Except it's, like, you know, for us, it's crazy expensive. Um, let's hold this uh, shitty match with, like, Greg says he's uh, waiting for the bus. No. No. I, I take public transit to myself, so. So, thank you, Greg, for listening to us while you wait for the pain. bus. Interesting. 
listening to this awesome podcast and hashtag no man gains he puts <laughs> now we're about to talk about no man gains right here perfect oh great but great we get the match that everyone wants to see the club versus roman reigns oh yeah who the hell actually looked forward to this? We saw this last week, first of all. But who the hell sat there and like, oh, man, I'm excited. The club's going to face Roman Reigns? Yeah. What do I want to watch on Monday Night Raw every goddamn Monday? The club destroys Reigns all match. Like, just kills him all match this week. Super Roman. Yep. Then we get uh, Super Roman. Get the, they try to use a chair to the club. And Reigns gets himself DQ'd. <laughs> what? <laughs> he got himself DQ'd. That's so and then he kicks the shit out cool, of the club. Cool, and then he kicks the shit out of the club. I, I really don't want to watch, oh talk to people much more about this. Oh, my God. But again, he, he, he the, makes the club. The tag team champions. Look like shit. Unreal. <laughs> That's right, again, I, this screams Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn. How am I supposed to take the club seriously as tag team champions? They're losing to one guy, let alone two guys. So dumb. It's so cringe. I don't know what I'd rather watch. I'd rather watch uh, something bad happening on TNA because I don't care about TNA. And the Impact Wrestling Eagle will go, woo! <laughs> oh, my God. I'm just done. Let's move on. We got a little promo package here. Uh... <laughs> Clarice Greg says he went to take a piss during the Roman Reigns Club match. <laughs> I would, too. <laughs> okay. Uh, New Day announces uh, there's this little promo package that New Day was on TMZ Live. The fuck? What the fuck is this? Why didn't just have a backstage promo? I don't know. They officially announced that they're the hosts of WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. Don't be in a oh, match or yeah. nothing. Heaven forbid New Day is in a match at WrestleMania. Um, nope. I just, I don't know. I, I'm moving on from that. I got nothing else to say about that. And speaking of New Day, we get Rusev and Steroid Mahal against the New Day. Uh, this was just filler. Plain and simple, this was filler. Uh, I regretted watching this, too, because I don't know what the fuck the I just blueprints, watched. Lana the blueprints, Lana stole The terrible it. iPad bullshit with the ice cream blueprints, whatever, what the fuck. I don't, I don't know what I'm watching The only here. good thing was when Woods got in the ring and he's like, yeah, of course Lana stole our stuff. She's Russian. Everyone in that arena wasted their money paying to go watch that <laughs> nonsense, man. <laughs> Literally. Like, yeah, glory to, yeah, thank you, Vince McMahon, for giving us this bullshit. Then they went to a commercial. Not, it's bad enough that we got a shitty segment before this match, but we had to deal with the commercial. Unfucking believable. We come back. We come back and I don't know what the fuck's going on here. There was this one point with Lana with the iPad and it got smashed. And I don't care because I don't. I don't want to talk about it. Wood stole it from her. And uh, broke it. And then they gave uh. The one Zin- they they what? came back from commercial break and Rusev's sitting there. In a in a movie, it sounds like he took like five laxatives and he's sitting on the toilet, man. Like ah ah. <laughs> Sound like Braun Strowman screaming. Anyways, we get midnight hour for the win on Steroid yeah. Mahal. Nah, that's great. We're moving right along. Get the uh, cruiserweight title contract signing, UK style, very English. A my tag. Gentlemanly. With biscuits and tea. Very gentlemanly. And so far, the show just screams done producing it because who the fuck cares about a cruiserweight contract signing with biscuits and tea? Who? 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 I don't know. Neville comes in. He just signs quick and he's about to leave. Gallagher's like, no, no, come on back here. Let's have some biscuits and tea. Yeah, because you guys are all of a sudden friends. That makes sense. Uh, Neville calls Gallagher embarrassing and basically calls him a stereotype of all men from the UK. Okay, sure. Uh, Neville gets basically face-to-face. He flips over the table. The biscuits and tea fucking go everywhere. I don't remember seeing tea being spilt, so there was obviously no tea. Uh, Gallagher just <laughs> headbutts Neville. And then that's it. End of segment. So at this point, what the fuck, man? We don't even have a cruiserweight match. I got one thing for this. Okay. <sighs> ah, yes. Yes, the, the yawn. Uh, so, yeah, at this point, we have no cruiserweight matches. But we have two segments. Oh, whoa, JPL. Where's this hour, though? Come on, man. I'm waiting here. That's two segments that add up about ten minutes. Not even. Attaboy, JBL. Attaboy. Uh, moving on. Oh, oh. God. 
do I have to talk about this? Do I like? I regretted doing a raw review this week. It's how bad raw this was this week. I I was cringing at everything I was writing on my notes this week. You got Nia Jax. Okay. Yeah. Not much else to say. Nia Jax. Squash. Hashtag random. no job or free Mondays. What? Why can't they give her a story? Thought she's supposed to be facing Sasha Banks. She, and now she doesn't have anyone else to face. So she's going back to jobbing again. Yeah, so to random jobber. She, she squashed some random jobber who we'll probably never ever see again. Um, she gets interviewed after claiming she's not uh, not been handed her title match yet. When did she Great. earn a title match? Great. So we know what this means. Another WrestleMania shitty card match rumored probably going to come to fruition. Great. We're going to get that Fatal 4-Way match, which is going to be so, so bad. No one wants to see that. No one wants to see that. What's Dana Brooke going to do? Botch. <laughs> Craig puts <laughs> Buck Nia versus Braun Strowman at WrestleMania. <laughs> Why aren't they a couple? Why don't they squash? They like... have. They can do mixed tag squash matches. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I just don't give a fuck about Nia Jax. That's plain simple. I don't give a fuck, and I, I'll say it bluntly. I don't care. Um, just getting some more women's division crap. You got a Bailey segment. So Bailey comes out with uh, her new tarnished looking title there. Uh, just terrible. Garbage division. That's all I gotta say about this division. It's garbage. Okay, you deserve a chance. Are we going to get these chants for every time someone wins a championship? Like, we've got it the last three title wins so far. I know that Bray Wise deserved it. Yes, I understand that. Naomi, whatever, man. She's eventually going to be champion. Yeah, she, I, I know these three people deserve it. But did they really need to chant it for Bailey after that tarnished win? I know it she's in her hometown. Even to begin with. But come on. It's just... Oh. Oh, <laughs> Craig puts Braun and Nia versus Nikki and John. Well, boy, that'll sell out. No, John or you know, Super Cena will prevail. Yeah. Uh, we know Roman Reigns will never get. You deserve a chance if he ever won again. <laughs> uh, he never did when he won the title in the first place. <laughs> so Bailey's talking about her life becoming a champion. Blah blah blah. Talks about winning it for her dad, and she's getting really emotional. I'm like Bailey, come on, stop getting emotional for a tarnished victim. <laughs> Did they make her do this? Like, I really hated the fact that she had to go all emotional for a tarnished win. I just, I don't understand. And so, in her promo, like, I know Bailey's been a super fan since she was a kid, but like, it just all, okay. All of the women out of this all this whole segment when we get to the end here felt like they didn't work. It was like they're reading scripts. It wasn't. They were given no creative freedom at all. This whole segment. And that's bad. That's really bad. When you can tell, it's bad. So Stephanie McMahon comes out. She talks about uh, Bailey's uh, tainted victory, and basically asks if Bailey is happy with how she won the title. And Steph says that Bailey should know uh, knows what she should do and the right thing that and knows what Bailey, the real Bailey, would do and has relinquished the title. At this point, I'm like, yes, okay, because I not this come from a Bailey fan here. I think she should have gave up the title. It would have made sense. Then you give up the title. You keep it vacant until WrestleMania. You don't You don't put Charlotte Streak in jeopardy at Fastlane. Okay? Or make her win the title again like a hot potato belt that it already is. You keep it vacant at this point until WrestleMania. And you have that fatal four-way for the vacant title. It makes there sense. you go. And then that way Bailey can win it back. In a credible way. Yeah, when you had to try to outlast three other women. You didn't pin a champion because no one was champion. You had to beat down all three people. You didn't have to worry about pinning the champion in a match or have to deal with that or are you having to deal with that. No. And if there's anyone... You just yeah. have the match. And if there's anyone that should be an underdog like that that would give it up and then win it back, it'd be Bailey. Yeah. Right? So she's about to hand Steph the title and out comes Sasha Banks. I'm like, oh my god, please turn heel. Please just fucking come out and, and, and bank statement Bailey so I can just finally get her to go heal. Man, there were times in this segment where she was out there and like I could see her like looking at her. I'm like, oh my god, she's actually gonna do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and then it, it was close. Didn't... It was a lot of teasing going involved. A lot of teasing. Uh, Sasha trying to, or out comes Sasha. Stephanie's man is just pissed. Just absolutely looking like giving her the stink eye and the bitch face. Uh, Stephanie. Uh, is basically trying to turn Bailey or trying to turn uh yeah Bailey on Sasha. 
saying that Sasha's the one that helped you win and uh, don't listen to Sasha. She, you know, she's just doing it to, you know, thinking that she, she can't beat Charlotte. She could beat Bailey instead. And just it's Stephanie Man trying to turn Bailey on Sasha. And uh, Sasha's just trying to get Bailey to keep her title. But Sasha needs to go heel, man. There, again, like you said, there are points where I thought she's going to go heel here. And I'm like, oh my God, just do it. Just fucking kick her or something. Do something. Um, Bailey says that everyone doesn't deserve this type of champion and doesn't like the way she won it. So she's finally agreeing. I'm like, oh man, she's going to do it. And this is a good thing. I'm like, I'm hating it. But at the same time, like, this is the right thing to do. And then she's like, should I give up? The women's championship. It says, hell no. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> she's keeping it. She she's never giving it up. Uh, I would have gave it up here. I don't know if this is the right move. This just shows you how bad the division is. Um, <laughs> Greg's like, Cappy and Glorious Greg guest appearance at Mania just confirmed. <laughs> why, why do I care about <laughs> this feud at all? Yeah. And then fucking Charlotte comes out. Yeah. This is at this point, if you if you had Bailey, you know what you should have done. Bailey said no at relinquishing the title, and have Sasha be pissed off, and then, or no, give her give up the title, and Sasha being all pissed for Bailey giving up the title and attack Bailey, then turn her heel right here. This should have been it. I think the reason why is because they have they literally have like no baby faces on Raw for women. The like Bailey's though gonna be the only one. Yeah, they have they're all heels. Like what are you gonna do? It's gonna be bad. Unless they, they make Sasha like a tweener. Yeah. Have her just not give a shit about either one and just beat up both heels and faces. Yeah. So out comes Charlotte at this point. Oh, great. Uh, Charlotte says she would garbage. like to apologize. <laughs> she would like to apologize on behalf of the entire women's division. <laughs> what? The fiction? <laughs> you mean the four people you have out there? Three? Sorry? Yeah. And they labeled this segment as Bailey's decision of Charlotte's <laughs> oh, request. Oh, God. The, like, the segment name that they've come up with on Raw. Charlotte's winning oh, strategy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Craig, look at this. Kyle Masters in the main event for the Universal title. Michael Chow is the champion. And Gamma is the ref. <laughs> God. What a main event. How, better than the freaking Roman Reigns and Undertaker match. Lesnar and Lesner. Goldberg. God. <laughs> Anyways, back to reality here somewhat. Uh, Charlotte says that she's happy Bailey not giving up her title because she's going to be happy to take it from Bailey. Uh, Sasha gets in Charlotte's face and challenge it, challenges Charlotte for old time's sake, and Charlotte accepts it. For old time's sake? Their feud just ended a month ago. <laughs> for old time? Not in the past, man. That was like years ago. <laughs> their feud, their, their fucking the eight-month-long feud God. just ended a month ago. Man, it's been so long since we've seen a Sasha and Charlotte match. Oh, oh my man, God. <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, this segment was just bad. I hated this segment. The mic skills were garbage. It was like Kevin Dunn talking through the women. You might as well had Dana Brooke come out and botch what she fucking wanted to yeah. say. Yeah, I, I can't get behind this division. I can't. There's nothing they can do right now to get me behind it. So we get to the Charlotte Sasha match. Which Bailey's is, on commentary. Yeah, Bailey's on commentary. Whatever. It's a decent match. Whatever. But we've seen it. Yeah. Ten times. <laughs> and we get the complete. Opposite at the end of last week. So Dana Brooke comes out again. Oh my God! Did you go back and see Dana Brooke come walking to? The... Can we? <laughs> I gotta look it up right now while you talk about the rest of this. Okay. So... I gotta show you Dana Brooke walking to the ring in this. <laughs> so Dana Brooke comes out and she distracts uh, Sasha Banks. So the same thing as last week, but uh, role reversed. And then Bailey comes out to attack Dana from behind and then help distract Charlotte for the win. <laughs> I just. I don't know. Whatever, man. I. It was like the exact same thing as last week, but yeah, literally the exact same thing. And we're getting into the uh, the video of here oh, of Dana Brooke God. walking or, okay. or yeah, running you, to the you, ring. You got you. You can't even call it walking. It was it was fucking horrific. Hang on, live on the podcast here. You know, yeah, live on a podcast. Do do she live here? Uh, move on. I'll find it. Oh. Oh, she may have... No, hang no. on. I got oh, it. I yeah. got it. <laughs> it's good. Okay. I didn't want to talk about whatever I was going to talk next. All right. Let's see this. Oh, God. Oh, Sasha Banks ran her WrestleMania gear. Yep. Nice. Look at that. The double knees. I love it. All right. Where's Dana Botch? Look, what is that? <laughs> what is that? Oh my god. How do you god. call that running? She's like fast walking. 
It was like she was walking in water. Oh, man. <laughs> God, that's oh. so bad. Oh. She can't even walk to the ring she, properly. She botches running. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, what God. is that? <laughs> that I'm done. Gif. That should be a gif. I'm done with this division, man. It's fucking... Uh, that right there is like the poster child for the Raw Women's <laughs> Division right there. That sums it up in a nutshell. Yeah, that yeah. right there. Oh, man. Let's all move on. Screw the Women's Division right now. Move on. Smackdown. Or Smackdown <laughs> Dana Bosch by Girlies Greg here. Dana Bosch. Oh. Uh, Sa- Sami Zayn. Uh, makes his entrance here. He's about to go one on one with Roman Reigns. Or no, right. Kevin Owens. Sorry, Kevin Roman Owens. Reigns. Why do I have see? He's, Roman Reigns is so much on this show. I have Roman Reigns written. They should down. just have Roman in every segment. Yeah, have Might him well. fight everybody. God. Anyway, so Sami Zayn's making his entrance, and Samoa Joe comes up from behind Sami Zayn and hit and attacks him. It absolutely destroys Sami Zayn around the ring here. Owens is smiling in the ring. Is this uh, teasing something here? It's the uh, NXT Invasion thing. Uh, Joe rolls Zayn into the ring, and Owens basically wins quickly with a pop-up powerbomb. Uh, yeah, it's the only thing worth watching so far on Raw. It's the only thing I got my money's worth. Well, not my money's worth, but, you know, my money night's worth. It was this this segment. That was it. I thought it was good. and it, I don't know if they're teasing the, the Owens and, and Joe um, alliance, but... Yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, I thought this was this was well done, though, kicking the shit out of Sami Zayn again. Yeah. Uh, Michael Cole interview with <laughs> Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar. Now I don't know if you guys have watched this. Jesus. And if you didn't, I suggest you go and watch this right now. So Cole opens up the interview by talking about Goldberg versus Owens for the Universal Title at uh, Fast Lane, and then Lesnar just gets pissed off. Like Heyman tells that Michael, you just pissed off Brock Lesnar basically, and he tries to scare Michael Cole. Michael Cole gets up and like. Tries to run away from the room. It like it looked like he like ran to a wall and said, "Oh shoot, I can't go anywhere." So he's just like awkwardly standing there. Yeah. So then Brock Lesnar grabs Michael Cole's chair, goes out to the far camera, turns it backwards, and sits there, and awkwardly just they zoom in on his face, and Lesnar's just making these weird ass faces the entire time Paul Heyman's talking. And giving this awesome promo while Lesnar just looks there <laughs> the whole time. And then at the end of the promo, Hayden like pokes his head out and looks at the camera. <laughs> like, what was this? Good promo, but what the fuck? Why did he have to be like two feet from the camera? <laughs> Again, the production, Kevin Dunn, Bugs Bunny. You, what is this? <laughs> Why did you need to do that? That was god awful, man. Con- yeah, Greg constipated Brock. He looked like he was constipated sitting there. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. Just incredible. Um, he just talked about what how Lesnar is, you know, pissed off at blah blah blah. It's the same usual shit. It was a good promo by Le- Heyman, but I couldn't even like watch my screen looking at this. I had to look away because I'm like, is Lesnar like staring at me right now, man? Like, what's going on? And he's like moving his head, like. Hmm? So he's trying to look uh, yeah. at something behind the camera. <laughs> is he trying to like look for Gold? Is he in the camera? Where's Goldberg? Where is he? <laughs> oh my god, I don't know what the fuck this was, but we're moving on. Uh, oh, and we move on to the greatest main event in Raw history: Braun Strowman versus the. This was the main event. This was the. Are you match. kidding me? Honestly, this is the main event. What the fuck? How is this supposed to get you excited for anything? The whole show, this whole episode of this show was god awful and you ended off with big show versus braun Strowman. that's what you. oh my god watch. i waited three hours for this shit really well luckily you didn't he's making his entrance big show oh big show is down to 383 pounds oh, okay good for him ozzy but who gives a fuck that he's down to 383 it's not like he can still wrestle. God! Oh, we reinforced the ring. They, they said reinforce the ring like 800 times throughout the whole show. We get it, okay? We know you had to fix the ring. They're two giants. <laughs> what, you're gonna, what, are you going to make the ring frail as fuck and make him fall through it? Doesn't make any Like, okay, we get it, man. Yeah, this is awesome chance. Are you guys... Are you guys yeah, I don't know what high. Los Angeles was smoking this week, but... This is awesome. Okay. W- whatever, man. We got Stroma with uh, a roll-up and some kick-ups. 
cool. Okay, that's a good. I guess it's a good showing. I guess you know the it, goons out there are gonna be like, oh man, what the hell, man? So a good showing. Sure, why not? I'll give credit. Uh, but it's not main. But is it main event worthy? No, absolutely not. Uh, spent half the match catching their breath. These two, literally. After we got that whole intro out of the way, they're fucking just dry heaving <laughs> for like the the 15 minutes of what the hell this match was. <laughs> they would do a move and then they're freaking sitting there having heart attacks. And uh, 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 <laughs> like, then they would do a move and they would get the same thing, rest hold. Uh, like, why is this a main event? Why do people fantasize about having two giants face each other in the ring? It's not what you think it's going to happen. These guys don't have the stamina of uh, AJ Styles or or John Cena. Like, what the hell is it's, wrong it's with gonna these guys? It's going to be slow. God. And they didn't even tease. They gave us a tease of a superplex, but they took – of course they take it away, and we actually don't get it. And that pissed me off right there. I'm like, okay, hey, they didn't give the superplex. I hate this goddamn match. I hate it. I didn't like anything about it. <laughs> I gave the match itself a zero. Strowman won, then Reigns comes out, even greater end to Raw, you get Roman Reigns again, and he gets his ass kicked. Sure, I, okay, I understand people are going nuts, like, oh, I love the ending because, uh, <laughs> Greg, 405 live. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Big Show's got to gain some weight. Yeah, he's 383 now, he's not, he doesn't classify for that division anymore. Uh... But yeah, Rome gets everyone on Twitter saying, "Oh my god, I loved how Rome got his ass kicked." Best part of Raw. Yeah, but we saw it like last week and the week before. Yeah, I want to see him get his ass kicked every week. But guess what? He had more TV time than, than Braun Strowman did. He had more TV time than the cruiserweights, all of them combined. <laughs> Unbelievable. Double. So I gave Raw this week a two out of ten. Um, two going <laughs> to the Kevin Owens thing. And I gave some points to Paul Heyman. You know, it was an awkward promo. Paul Heyman putting up a good promo. Well, he didn't like Lesnar in it. And I couldn't look at the TV, man. I couldn't watch it. It was creeping me out. And that's pretty much it, man. I can't give anything else to anything else. Um, Two out of ten this week. I did like Strowman's power slam that he did on Big Show. I mean, that oh, was... Oh, whoa! Yeah, it was cool, sure. And they actually botched one of them in the corner. Like, yeah. Strowman was trying to grab him, and then he, like, he was falling. So yeah, he he's, like, he's trying to spin. Oh, man, you're carrying 383 pounds. I thought you were supposed to be a monster of a man. What happened to that? Um, Liars. Monster of a man, my ass. Let me let me look here. Give me, uh, give me, man, I gotta get this great rating out of the way. Oh, God. This is gonna be a fa- the fantastic corporate cappy rating here. <clears throat> oh, one for Kevin Owens' segment. Ooh. One. You got one. You got one so far. The anticipation is real. More anticipating than the main event of Raw here. And I'm giving it a half point for Strowman's kick up. There you go. One and a half. Wow. One and a half. Yep. Well, again, you produce shitty Raw. We're giving it shitty ratings. What else do you want to do, ladies and gentlemen? What else do you want to do? Raw was bad. Dumpster fire. As I always say, official hashtag of Noah's About Wrestling Podcast. It was hashtag dumpster fire. I can't believe we even spent. <laughs> How long did we spend on this review? Yeah. Longer than should I think too long. Uh, Greg says you should have gave it a 0.5 out of 10. <laughs> well, I have to give credit when credit's due okay. once in a while. So, I mean, one 1.5 out of 10 is pathetic. All right, let's talk about the A brand, the blue brand, the A show. Just the greatest show on earth, and that is SmackDown Live. Um, it, was, it was good, again. I missed the first hour because I was at school, of but course. For the consecutive week in a row, it's way better than what Raw produces in the first five minutes of their show. Literally. SmackDown wins in the first five minutes. And we get up. Man, we just start. We start off uh, crazy. SmackDown usually opens up with something cool and gets us excited. I mean, this gets you excited, but it was also emotional. Uh, we start off with Daniel Bryan coming out and asking Naomi out to the ring. And she's still in her knee brace. And I'm going, oh, so the whole rumor of her injury is actually maybe real? And we get into that, and it just it looks like she's it, – it, it doesn't look fake at all. And apparently she did injure herself during the Alexa Bliss title match. So everyone's freaking blaming Alexa Bliss. I'm like, everyone, calm down, man. Like, it wasn't her fault. Everyone needs to chill out. It's always got to be saying. someone's fault. Um. So Brian says that they, uh, him and Shane went over Naomi's radical, medical records, and because of the injury Naomi suffered at Elimination Chamber, she'll be forced to relinquish the SmackDown Live's Women's Championship. Because apparently there's a 30-day uh, 
Yeah, he brings out this 30-day uh, championship obligation that if you're the champion, you have to defend it within the first 30 days. Oh, yeah? Oh, That's yeah? Brock Lesnar. That's Dean Ambrose. Remember Dean Ambrose? He's U.S. champ for like a year and a half, and he defended it maybe twice in that year and a half. Such horse crap. Yeah, I hate how they just they, – they, they make – they think we're stupid. They make up these rules on the spot yeah. and think that we don't understand it. And they're coming out with this Darby rules book. <laughs> I actually want to get this yeah. book. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'll throw it back in their face. Yeah, so Naomi thanks Brian for the kind words. Brian understands her situation. Uh, Naomi talks about how she was on cloud nine last week. Now she feels like she's being knocked off the mountain. Naomi feels bad for her fans who've had her back during this journey. Naomi starts to cry here and it gets really emotional. I'm like, oh God, so this is actually like legit. And when Naomi gives Brian the title back, that probably means uh, – when Naomi gives Brian the title back, that probably means WrestleMania is out of the picture as well. Naomi hands over the title to Brian. Naomi gets a big round of applause. Interesting. So, you know the well, extent of Naomi's injury yet. Who knows? So Maybe we'll she'll see. come back in her hometown yeah. of Orlando at WrestleMania and win it back. Hopefully. Uh, Brian starts to hug Naomi. Uh, Alexa Bliss makes her way to the ring. Yeah. As Naomi was walking to the back, Bliss says, That was amazing. Bliss could have gone without the sob stories, though. <laughs> it was perfection when Naomi relinquished the title. Bliss wants her title rematch. We're in a jaw. We're in a jaw right now. Bliss wants the crowd to shut up. She would like to help all. Should to help all at all cause. Bliss wants Brian to give her the title to her. As difficult as it was for Brian to take the title away from Naomi, he's not going to give Bliss the title back. Uh, Brian knows that Bliss wants her rematch tonight. Alexa Bliss will take out, will take on Becky Lynch for the vacant SmackDown Women's so Championship. Can I ask you how Becky right Lynch now. was given uh, a match? Why wasn't Alexa just know. given the title? Eh, make it fair, you know. Oh, uh, you, gotta, you gotta keep get the spirit of competition. Oh bullshit, <laughs> Greg. The book of glorious Greg. <laughs> oh, I want to read that book. Read it, it man. <laughs> read it, man. He puts. Sure. Oh, God, Greg. You, you cracked me up, bro. Uh, so we get into this match. Alexa Bliss versus Becky Lynch for the vacant SmackDown Women's Championship. Uh, pretty decent match. I thought it was I pretty missed, good. I missed the you whole missed fucking match. Yep. <laughs> uh, at one point, Bliss with a palm strike to the throat of Becky behind the ref's back. So I guess it's a, I guess it's a cheap shot. Can't palm strike someone's throat. Yeah. Who knew? Ask uh, Sasha Banks with the, with the yeah. trying to hit Charlotte and get yeah. her on a boob, you know? Uh, I guess but we'll have to check out this new rule book, see if that's even allowed. Uh, Bliss rolls Becky up with a handful of tights to pick up the victory. And Bliss celebrates with Mickey James on the stage. Mickey James tries to cheap shot Becky, but she kicks her out of the ring. And your new SmackDown Women's Champion, Alexa Bliss. And I missed it. And you missed it. And I missed it. <laughs> I didn't even know what happened. Mm. Until, like, the second hour of SmackDown came around when I got home and watched it. And then they're like, on SportsCenter tomorrow, a new women's champion, Alexa Bliss. I'm like, what? <laughs> when? <laughs> oh, but oh, man. happy for her, but it yeah. was, I guess it was a tainted victory. Yeah. Again. Uh, we had a backstage promo with Natalia here. Uh, she says that tonight I'm going to show everybody why Nikki is just a cheap Natalia knockoff. <laughs> Ooh. I love this feud. Yeah. Uh, she said she, everyone isn't fooled with her fake laugh and her fake sincerity and her <laughs> silicone body. <laughs> <laughs> and Natalia says she will expose Nikki as a cheap Natalia knockoff. Beautiful. That's interesting. You know, a second match here, American Alpha versus Brazongo. So we get a Brazongo sighting. Wow. Interesting. The fashion police. Yeah. Uh, they attack American Alpha before the bell rings. So, uh, heel tactics. It looks like they're still heel. Sure. It's a decent match. I mean, it wasn't too too long, but it was a good showing. And again, a, again, a, uh, a good showing of American Alpha being the dominant tag team champions of this little hazy division. Um, Brazongo goes for a double vertical suplex, but Jordan gets back on his feet. Jordan tags in Gable. Gable clotheslines Breeze over the top rope. American Alpha connect with the sky-high bulldog to pick up the victory. So interesting way to win the match as well. So different, uh, I guess, just showing that American Alpha have more than just their usual finisher and to win a match. So you know what, I, I understand, I understood why this match happened and how it happened basically. So again, SmackDown just produces matches with a lot of reasoning behind it that you can get behind. 
Uh, Glorious Greg says he hates the Fashion Police gimmick, by the way. I don't like it either. I'm not a fan either, either. No, no. After the match, the Upos appear... Uh, the Ufo, Upos. The Usos, <laughs> Usos, <laughs> appear in the crowd. Usos say the American Alpha should be introduced as the future ex-Smackdown tag team champions. Cool. Usos say the American Alpha can't get ready for the Usos. How, how can you train to fight two brothers who have nothing to lose? You can't. Jimmy reminds American Alpha, it's not paranoia, it's the Usos. I love it. All right, all right. Uh, you know what? As much as I was a little awkward and, you know, uh, the Usos good, cut a good promo here. I liked it. I liked it. Good for I, the I'm, Usos. I'm looking forward to this Greg match. says the Usos, not the Usos. Uh, they're, they're not the Usos anymore. They're actually really good now. Yeah. Um, it's announced at this point Becky Lynch, Styles, and the Usos will be the special guest on Talking Smack. Oh yeah, not the, where, uh, not, not the new real Kyle Masters here got on Talking Smack. Yeah, with a tweet. Well, yeah, with a tweet. Not your first tweet though, which was way better than your second one. Yeah. Um, throughout the night, we had uh, each member of the Battle Royal have like their own individual promos too. It's just like so, so like cheesy WWE. But that you know what? It, it, I like I like some of them. Some Mojo of them were bad. Rawley's was yeah. terrible. Some of them were bad. Some of them were good. Um, so whatever. Uh, we got uh, Nikki Bella backstage. She says she's ready to give everything she has in the Fatal uh, Falls Count Anywhere match against Natty by Nature. Nick, Renee Young asked Nikki for her thoughts about her match. Nikki had some feelings for Natty, but now she doesn't care. Then they are no longer friends. Nikki will show she's more than a pretty face. She was the longest reigning Divas champion for a reason. Yeah, you're the Divas champion because you are a Diva. That championship means nothing. Nikki. Um, she will leave it out. She'll leave it all out there after tonight. Nikki or Natty will be known as the Broken Heart. Is that a jab at Matt Hardy? <laughs> no, it's not. I'm just being a goon. It's not. Everyone relax. Uh, so we got Nikki Bella versus Talia in a Falls Count Anywhere match, and man, was this match ever good? Unreal. Wow. Great false count anywhere match. Yeah, they used man. They went everywhere. They they used the side of the rings. They went and used the side stage. It went backstage where we had the little tease again uh, with Maurice getting Nikki getting thrown into Maurice, and that's clearly teasing their future WrestleMania match. Uh, we get down to the end of the match. Natalia goes for the sharpshooter, but Nikki counters with the fearless lock, man, oh. which is literally identical to the STF. STF. But it's called the Fearless Lock. Neat. But then Maurice comes down to the ring and repeatedly attacks Nikki with a lead pipe. That was because in the bat when they, they yeah, wrestled Yeah, he, he got thrown into it. I said that. Yeah. yeah. It, it, again, teasing this horrible WrestleMania match. Miz tries to get Maurice off Nikki. Natalia takes advantage of the beatdown and scores the pinfall. Wow. I actually wouldn't have thought Natty would get the win here. Um... Glory Drake says we got all our tweets on Talking Smack. Oh, interesting. Cool. Mm. Uh, for, so we get into the last match of the night. Uh, we had the Battle Royal. Ten-man Battle Royal. We had AJ Styles, Luke Harper, Dean Ambrose, Mojo Rawley, Apollo Crews, Kalisto, Baron Corbin, The Miz, John Cena, Dolph Ziggler, and a ten-man over-the-top row Battle Royal. And the winner will take Randy Orton's spot to face Randy Orton, or Bray Wyatt, at WrestleMania. <laughs> so... For the belly and rings, a full dining book kind of ensures here. Uh, match was pretty good. I liked it. Uh, some interesting eliminations that are uh, feud setups. So we had Ambrose and uh, Corbin. That's setting up a feud. We had the whole Ziggler thing with uh, Apollo Crews. So it looks like Apollo Crews is going to face... I think Apollo Crews and uh, Ziggler are going to go one-on-one at Mania. I actually want to see that match. I do too. I, I think that would be a pretty good match. If they're going to give them the full time, like a full 10, 15-minute match, all power to them. Uh, and we get the interesting elimination by The Miz on John Cena setting up their match and Miz running into the crowd and doing the whole you can't see me thing to John Cena. So it's all but confirmed that John <laughs> Cena and Nikki will face Miz and Maurice at WrestleMania. John Cena's face when he got thrown over. God. Uh, Greg is, is happy for Cruz finally getting exposure. And where does Natty go from here, he asked. I don't know. Where does Natty go from here? Maybe thrown in. There's a rumor that it's going to be a fatal four-way women's match, but that, you know you already have the spots with Becky, uh, 
uh, Mickey James. Unless Mickey James is not really going to turn on Alexa just yet. Maybe she's uh, in her corner. Who knows? Who knows if Naomi's going to fight too? Yeah, exactly. So we'll see. Uh, the Cruz actually didn't you say Cruz cut a good promo before the match? Yeah, too? his backstage promo was actually really good. Um, more seriousness out of Apollo Cruz, which we've been waiting for. And that, remember, they tried that stupid spelling gimmick, and that was god awful. Oh. Um, but yeah, you know, Cruz is looking more and more credible. I'm hoping they're turning him around as well. Uh, so we get near the end of the match where we're left with Styles and Luke Harper as the final two. Who now has a clean shirt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, near that the match, Harper with a suplex that sends both men tumbling to the outside. And it looks like Styles hit the ground first. And I think they are both supposed to hit the ground first because if you look at it again, it was because Luke Harper is so fucking huge that he wasn't able to hit the floor at the same time with Styles. He hit the ring first instead of going to the floor. So you know, I think that was sort of botched, but you, know, you, you can't really do anything about it. Right? You know, they only have a thousand different camera angle replays, but they don't have that yeah. one. Uh, Dan O'Brien comes out and announces that this match has ended in a draw. AJ Styles will take on Luke Harper in a number one contenders match next week. Harper drops Styles with a discus clothesline. Hmm. This is actually interesting because I thought, I think everyone else thought out there too, um, that we're going to get a clear-cut winner. I know all y'all are pissed out there that we didn't get a clear-cut winner here, but you know what? I'm sorry. You need to relax. We have six weeks Tell WrestleMania to build this feud. I think this is a smart decision. I Nothing honestly do. do. Don't give it away where it away. Yeah, and they made the right move by doing it this way. And now we're going to get AJ Styles versus Luke Harper, which is going to be a really good match next week. And who knows? We don't know what's going to happen. Is Shane McMahon going to get involved with Styles? What's going to happen in this match? Is Styles going to get DQ'd? Like, there's, there's so many possibilities here. What actually could happen? So, I can't wait. Again, SmackDown makes you want to tune in every single week. To see what happens. And now, our tune-in match for next week. They always have a tune-in match. This week was the False Count Anywhere match. Next week is Luke Harper and AJ Styles. I'm giving SmackDown a perfect 10 this week. And just for that, I'm playing the sound clip. 10. Yes, it's per 10. I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. I found nothing wrong with, with, with SmackDown this week. Absolutely nothing wrong. I didn't see the first hour. And yeah, no, you can't give it the same review as me. Yours will be different, but I'm giving it because I watched it all. I'm giving it a perfect 10. I'll give it, from what I saw, five, 5 out of 6. Wow. <laughs> That's good. I, I did, I missed... So, 5 out of 6, which basically, if you did watch it, would turn into a 9 out of 10. So, and it, it, it's, it's what you should get. Uh, <laughs> Clark's Greg puts, like Michael Shell said, if people were pissed with the ending, then go watch Raw. <laughs> Exactly. I you guys, dare you. If y'all out there hate the ending of SmackDown, you literally just need to watch Raw and don't watch SmackDown anymore because you're not worth SmackDown's time if you think that was a, a terrible ending and didn't like it. so It's I, because SmackDown gets a pay-per-view right after Royal Rumble, so now they have to build on SmackDown for seven weeks before yeah. WrestleMania. And it's better. Can you imagine Raw do that? It'd be so boring. It'd be terrible. They're, they're doing it bad enough they're, they have yeah, a pay-per-view really now. in a week. <laughs> exactly. Um, so let's just get into the next segment. So those are reviews for Raw and SmackDown. Let's get into our, our next segment, which yet to have the theme song. I'm still trying to work on that. But is the list of 10, ladies and gentlemen. Basically, me and Corporate Cappy here have five moments each. And we give it a rating of a perfect 10. That means that we like it. Or it makes the list. mean that we don't like it. So, in saying that, let's take it away, Corporate Cappy. First 10 moment of the week. Natty versus Nikki in that. Going back in time to like an Attitude Era hardcore match, man. Yeah. Like I loved every that was, minute of it. That was so good. Like when Natty threw Nikki, I don't remember who who someone threw someone through a TV monitor. No, it was a, a mirror. He, oh, it was uh, a mirror. Nikki threw Natty like a through a mirror. <laughs> that was freaking awesome. Yeah. And then the lead pipe spot, like it was yeah. just like was when so have good. I ever seen that from a woman's match? That literally was Attitude Era esque, like all over it. I loved it. We're watching Raw's War this week. And that was great. The, the feud is just getting even better, and I, I think it's going to end soon. But, I mean, mm. they just continued to get me interested in it. So, for that, it gets a... 10. Yep. I agree. Uh, my moment, my first moment, is a list moment. And that goes to how bad Monday Night Raw was <laughs> this week. 
Like every week. Yes, right? it's bad every week, but this week takes the cake, ladies and gentlemen. This probably was the worst Raw since the brand split. Uh, terrible booking. Scripting was below par. Everything surrounded two guys the entire goddamn show. Dunn must have been given more creative control this week in producing because I don't know what the hell that was. That had nothing. Michael Hayes didn't even have anything written on this. Okay, this is all mattered. Vince and Dunn. Um, and that, and for just for that, it was cringe. And for that, Monday Night Raw. You know what? You just made the list. Yeah, Monday Night Raw was bad. Yeah. God. Speaking of Monday Night Raw, Nia Jax going oh back to squashing local jobbers. Why? This is this should have been over in September. <laughs> Why are we still doing this? Oh, next yeah, we 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 have Nia Jax. We don't know enough about her. First of all, she goes from jobbing. Then she goes to feuding with Sasha and Bailey. Then she goes back to jobbing again. Why? Why can't they give her and someone that, now else? Now she deserves a title shot. That makes oh, sense. Oh yeah, you deserve. You, you oh know, yeah, you, you sure. know what you deserve. Yeah, yeah. You, you know deserve. What? You just made the list. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, moving on to my next moment is another list moment. A lot of list moments for me this week. New Day announced as the WrestleMania hosts. How the mighty have fallen. Quoted by Cappy. Such misuse of talent here. It's incredible. Probably going to debut the New Day ice cream or some bullshit there. And I don't care. I really don't. I'll never buy New Day ice cream. I hope none of you guys will out there. Nobody cares that would be about this. Nobody cares. And for that, New Day. You know what? You just made the list. Yeah. So we'll get into your next moment. Next 10 moment. Another NXT shout out from this week. NXT was Ooh. pretty good this week. It was. And if you it guys was, missed it, go watch it. It's and it was great. another. Yeah, I'm going to give a shout out to the, the Triple Threat Women's Number One Contender match. It was a good match. Yep. But my 10 moment is Pete Dunne versus Mark Edwards in another UK uh, division showcase match, which was really good between the bruiserweight Pete Dunn yeah, the and Mark Dunn. Edwards. Not, not Kevin Dunn, Pete Dunn. With an E at the end. With an E. Dunn with an E. So the bruiserweight getting the big win. This is this was a great technical wrestling match. If you're into that stuff, go back and watch this match. It was fantastic. I expect big things from Pete Dunn. And for that, he gets a... Whoops, I didn't play it right. Ten. <laughs> and it's a perfect 10. I agree. And Craig agrees with you as well. Uh, next moment for me, and it's a 10 moment, or not 10, tease. It's huh. a nice moment. And that is the WWE Women's Titles, SmackDown and Raw's. SmackDown does the right thing this week. Relinquishes it for a right reason. The right reason's there. They relinquish it. Makes sense. Raw has the right reason to do it. They don't do it. They do the complete opposite. They make Bailey hold it when she should have given up. Bailey should not be the champion right now. Tarnished victory for her first title. The most garbage way to make her first championship to be that tarnished. She's supposed to be the John Cena division? Are you when kidding When you get me? on Raw. Unbelievable. Raw's division is a, a absolute dumpster fire. Might as well take the Raw women's title and throw it into that dumpster fire too. And just for that, Raw's women division. You know what? You just made the list. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Last 10 moment for me is obviously Alexa Bliss winning back her rightfully oh, yeah. deserving SmackDown it. women's title. Unfortunately, I didn't see it. I went back and watched the highlight, if you even call it a highlight, but <laughs> whatever. After Naomi was forced to forfeit, I mean, I feel bad for Naomi finally winning a title after, what, four years of being in the company? Yeah. And, I mean, Alexa shouldn't even have been put in the match anyway. That was Daniel Bryan's fault. Rude. Ooh. Rude, Daniel. Rude, okay? <laughs> but Alexa, as always from me, gets a... Ten. And it's a new background on my phone. Oh, look at that. Yes, yes. Very nice picture. <laughs> Next moment for me. It's a ten moment. Oh, wow. I have one. Look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a ten moment. And as the Usos look more relevant again, the intriguing feud with the American Alpha is actually really good. I like it. I like this new look of the Usos. Who would have thought that heel Usos would have like made them more credible? Honestly. Uh, Greg says Daniel Bryan should be on the list. Yeah, well, we'll see. Uh, good work on talking smack by the Usos. They, <laughs> I guess there is a lot of uh, uh, Twitter chatter, a lot of funny shit they've said on, on talking smack. I have to go rewatch it. I was kind of busy trying to get on talking smack to listen. Uh, should be a good match at WrestleMania if it happens. The rumored uh, American Alpha vs. Usos for the smack. I really like titles. that a lot because there's I, really no other team that's credible no, right keep now. Keep all the other. Don't do any turmoil shit. Keep this 
two versus two. I would love uh, that. You know what I would like to see, though, is a secondary tag team feud. Yeah. Like, why aren't two other tag teams Why aren't the Ascension feuding with, I don't know, VOD villains for some reason? Or, <laughs> or Zongo. Police. I don't know. Something. It, it should be a secondary feud. I agree. But for the Usos being heels and being credible again, they get a perfect... Ten. All right. So, yeah. That is my last ten moment, or my only ten moment of the week. And we'll get into my next moment after yours. My last list moment. And you thought you were going to have it without him. No way. <laughs> Every week, this guy. Roman Reigns. Oh, making yeah. the, the list. Yep. You thought you'd be without him. Nope. You can't be anything without Roman Reigns. <laughs> Roman Reigns burying the club for the second straight week. Making him look terrible. Facing one person. Can't even get the job done against one guy. <laughs> And they're supposed to be taken credibly as tag team champions. How am I supposed to take them credible when they're losing to No Man Gains? Yeah, hashtag Twice. No Man Gains. Glorious Greg loves that hashtag, No Man Gains. Oh my god, Roman Reigns, man. Every week, this guy, he needs his own list. <laughs> Roman Reigns making the list. His own list. The list of Roman. Oh, man. Yeah. And uh, I guess for that, Roman Reigns. You know what? You just made the list. Every week, this guy. Every week. And we're in my last moment, and it's a list moment. Oh, God. Ladies and gentlemen. Big Show versus Braun Strowman main eventing Monday Night Raw. Are you kidding me? Really? These two main eventing Monday Night Raw. (laughs) And a match where it looked promising in the first two minutes. And then they just had to catch their breath for the, the next 18 minutes. And then they finally got the ending. Of, I'm actually, they were so relieved to end the match. Because they probably caught all, except for Strowman. He had to freaking work a little bit more. I bet you Big Show was like, <laughs> get, needing like a ventilator. or like a, <laughs> He needed one of those oxygen tanks that the NFL have at ringside, man. God, I bet you that's what they do during the commercial break. They probably go to the, with an oxygen tank. Like, yeah, yeah, like uh, underneath uh, the ring. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. For Strowman and Big Show being irrelevant and making the main event of Raw for that Monday Night Raw. You know what? You just made the list. Yeah. <laughs> Why do I care about Big Show in 2017 being in the main event of Raw? God, yeah. Seven weeks before <laughs> WrestleMania. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> Glorious Greg, the list of Roman. Believe that, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. Oh, man. That's great. I, that's great. That's so, actually really good. Congrats one. to our, if you call them winners. Yeah. I guess you can call them winners. I had four list moments in one <laughs> 10 moment this week. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. Shows you how good it was this week. Uh, all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we'll get into that part of the show, and that is the WWE headlines. Hit that headline music. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to WWE Headlines, the part of the show where I talk about any important news in the WWE. And one interesting one actually came out of today. Interesting. Really, really interesting. Um, There's a rumor trade going on uh, that's supposed to happen after WrestleMania. Oh, no. Uh, They're supposed to get a roster trade. And Golden Truth for the Ascension? No, surprisingly not. <laughs> I wish that was a trade. That sounds like a really good trade. Uh, no, the trade is, and a lot of you guys out there are going to be really pissed off, but John Cena and AJ Styles for Brock Lesnar and No Man Gains. There you go, SmackDown. Rest dead. in peace, SmackDown, if that trade actually does happen, man. Unfucking real Are you kidding me? This really... Like, I know, where, when's the draft? June? June. Like, if they're going to have it in June or July, why have a trade now? Why don't just wait? You're already almost at the draft anyway. I don't, That'd I don't be the know. worst trade in history. That actually might be the worst trade in history. Brock Lesnar's part-time. Roman Reigns, I don't want to see him part-time at all. God. I don't want to see him anytime. Styles is going to get buried on Raw. It's going to be bad. Unless they have plans of making him the guy on Raw, then it's going to be The just guy. Well, you know, the guy is going to go to SmackDown. Oh, my God. And <laughs> you'll just kill all SmackDown's momentum if Roman Reigns goes to SmackDown. Are they, is, why are they doing this? Do they think they're going to get him over on SmackDown? Is that what they're trying to do? I think so. 
I think they, 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 they see how good SmackDown's doing, right? And, oh, yeah. Because uh, the, the fans aren't going to boo Roman when he comes in and screws it all up. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to make SmackDown so bad. I don't understand, Great. man. I don't. Uh... I mean, Roman squashed everybody on Raw, so he's got no one else to do on Raw, so now they're going to put him on SmackDown to squash everyone there. Oh. Well, uh, I guess that's... Uh... I don't know. I don't know if they can confirm that, but... Sure. If this trade happens, we'll we'll talk about it then. If not, I hope they actually have some oh, better God, trades. They reconsider in, this trade. Uh, better trades in mind. Um, Greg says Vince is screwing up. That would be yeah. What else is new? Uh, another bit of news: Kelly Kelly confirms her WWE return rumors and says she will be at WrestleMania 33, saying she will be at Access. So if you guys want to access, you can meet uh, Barbie Blank over there, Mrs. Sure, for those hockey people. Yeah, Mrs. There. Sure. Okay. Why? I just hope to God she doesn't come back in in ring capacity, man. Kelly Kelly, like, yeah, she's great to look at, but she was an absolute garbage wrestler. I don't even know if you can call yeah. her a wrestler. I, she is a perfect Divas title champion. She was fucking horrific. <laughs> and that's putting it nicely. That's, like, the nicest way I can put it. Yeah. For, sorry, Kelly Kelly. I mean, you're hot as fuck, but I can't. <laughs> uh, some rumors here. The Hardys. Their current contracts with TNA have either just expired or will be in the next week. Derby has made it clear that they want them while avoiding any direct negotiations with contracted talent. The Hardys have been telling promoters that when it comes to the dates starting in May, they cannot commit until they figure out what the next move is. I just can't get over this fucking Kelly Kelly thing, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> wh why are you moving the women's division in forward in 2017? And then you get wrestlers like her and Dana Brooke and Nia Jax that are going to bring yeah. the division backwards. I don't know. I don't know. She's not going to add anything to the division at all whatsoever. Yeah. Nothing. You're right. You're right. I, I can't argue with you. You're right. She can't wrestle. Uh, oh, I'm, I can't. I can't. Like, yeah, I just so can't even talk about it. was interesting news here, and it's really not WWE's fault or Chris Jericho, but Chris Jericho apparently inspires Kill List brought to school by a young student. News 13 Orlando reports that middle school student in, if I'm saying this right, Point Shiana, Florida, if I'm saying that wrong, I'm sorry, brought a kill list to class earlier this week. The list was inspired by The List, made famous by WWE superstar Chris Jericho, according to the Sheriff's Office report. The kill list reportedly includes most of the kids on the school football team <laughs> saying he wanted to shoot them. The Sheriff's Office incident report noted that the deputies contacted the family of the student who created the list, and they uh, claim the boy got the idea from watching WWE and mimicking Jericho, who keeps a list of people he dislikes. The family said the boy has no intentions of harming anyone, but the incident led to parents keeping their kids out of school after the report came out. The school did not go into specifics about what happened or whether any disciplinary action was taken. As serious as this is, at the same time, it's ridiculous. Because the fact you can take anything... And turn it into something extreme like that. Like yeah. it's just like the same people that say Grand Theft Auto is a terrible game that kids shouldn't play because it encourages them and influences them to go out and kill random uh, pedestrians. But that, yeah, it, you're right. But there are people like us that can play it, and we're not going to go out and kill people. So yeah. it ju it just depends on how someone takes and perceives something and then goes yeah. and turns it into something. And, there are and, many kids that that probably saw Jericho's list and are making lists, but not. A kill list, you know what yeah. I mean? It, it doesn't make sense because that's not what Jericho's doing. It, not it's not. All. You can't take what Jericho's doing on TV as anything bad. It's PG. We're still in the. Regardless of what anyone says, we're still in the PG era. It, it may be a little bit more edgier, but Vince is still a public trade. This is still a public traded company. We cannot do anything er, attitude era shit at all anymore. He's like, not influencing kids to go out and make a kill list of people. Yeah. It's just that that kid saw it and then took it in his own way and then inputted that into something else, which was completely m tilted from what the yeah. actual truth was. Yeah. So, so uh, some update on uh, Naomi. Apparently, she's currently doing rehab on her knee, and she's looking to make uh, make it back in time for WrestleMania. But uh, everything is up in the air currently. Uh, she could, and it's noted that she may be out of action for around two months. Oh my God! So, but I've... WrestleMania 33 status is up in the air. Yeah, I feel so bad for her if she misses that. Yeah. That'd just be horrible. Yeah. 
So interesting. So uh, apparently there's something going on here. I'm reading online. Kevin Owens replies to The Rock. Finn Balor return note. So oh. I want to see what Kevin Owens replied to The Rock about. And I'm reading this live, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, if you guys want and care, Cash is Ono. His theme song's out. If anyone does care. No one cares because he's uh, out of shape as fuck still. Rock tweet out, appreciate the champ himself, Kevin Owens, stopping by the people's hood to say hello. Hmm. Interesting. And Kevin Owens says, great seeing you, dude. Wow. That was so exciting. Glad I read that. Um, <laughs> Balor is being advertised for some Raw live events in March. As I said before, Balor has... Uh, is. Uh, Balor has always been scheduled for WrestleMania 33, but there's no word yet on his role will be. He's been out of action since SummerSlam 2016. And he made an appearance, I guess, on NXT taping in the next couple weeks, saving Shinsuke Nakamura. So, And he said he's not quite say. ready yet, but yeah. he will be. It's going to be interesting to see what taping that was from, though. Because they taped like three weeks in advance, so we'll see. Uh, but yeah, he's going to be at some live events near us. It sucks because tickets around here are ridiculous, so who knows? Um, yeah, I doubt it, but yeah. I have another piece of news that I just saw. What's that? Zeb Coulter has now been <laughs> signed a, a contract with TNA. Oh my god, who is he going to manage, man? No, no, <laughs> in a creator slash writer, writer oh, role. Oh, damn it. So <laughs> Zeb Coulter... Is gone from WWE and is now on TNA Impact in a creative and writer role. I got something we could talk about. We didn't in the Raw review. DDP is officially announced in the WWE Hall of Fame. We knew it was rumored for a long time, and it was we he, basically knew it a couple months yeah. ago. He but, inducted Jake Roberts like yeah. what was it, last year or two years ago. Yeah, well now, deserved for DDP. Now it's official. Um, here here's some interesting news. Take it how you guys want. Um, adult film company Brazzers is producing a parody of WWE's infamous Montreal screw job. Featuring actress Mia Malkova as WWE Hall of Famer Shawn Michaels and Rami Rain as WWE Hall of Famer Bret Hart and Johnny Castle as Vince McMahon. <laughs> Filming began this week, but there's no word yet on if the movie will be released. It appears The Fuck Job is the name of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, they're dressed like Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. I saw I it. Sh- I saw the oh picture. Oh my god. If and you the want title, to really make, it's a Brazzers title. If you want to really make it fuck job, you might as well just put Roman Reigns. <laughs> and just have him screw everybody. That's basically what he does every week anyway. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. No, Fucking man. have him, Kevin, Dunn, Vince, all in three way. There you oh, go. Oh, wow. That's... <laughs> three of them. I mean, if you guys are into that stuff, man. Sure. I, I don't I don't. Judge. I have nothing else to say to that. Yeah. But uh, that's going to do it, man. That's all the news that we have. Um, oh, and uh, I, I, oh my God, I bought Alexa Bliss's new shirt that came out. You did? Oh yeah, he, he, he uh, I caved the day caved, it came out. But it sucks that the next day it went on for thirty percent. Unbelievable. We're not gonna talk about that. But that, yeah. that was about it. Yeah. Other than that, guys, that is gonna wrap it up for week number forty-six of the Lowdown Show. Brand Wars on the Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are Canadian base. WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also during the show, we have our segment called The List of Ten and WWE Headlines, where we're talking about any important news in the WWE. And yeah, any important news in WWE. Remember, every week the Lowdown Show is broadcasted right here live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP or on the Spreaker app. Guys, go download it. It's available on all Android and Apple devices as you can listen through the show. Glorious Greg is is uh, on the chat part of the, the app. So yeah. thank you, Craig, for we're your always, uh, chatting. We're always show. adding new things. Yeah. Uh, if you want your thoughts, questions, or opinions read on the podcast, tweet us at NoHoldsBarredWP or by dropping a comment on YouTube. I am your host. The self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and every week I'm continuing to be joined by my co-host, the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. New champ, baby. New champ. And as always, guys, we're reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. <laughs>